In our first video on thirds, we saw that we could use these rules over here to multiply and divide them. What we're going to do in this video is take it a step further. We're going to put some values on the front of the thirds and see what happens. We're also going to look at expanding out some thirds with brackets around them to find out what happens there as well. So we'll start here with number one. We've got 2 root 3 multiplied by 4 root 5. So for questions like this, we just multiply the coefficients, those values on the front first of all. So 2 times 4 will give you 8. And here we've got root 3 times root 5. We multiply those together as well. Now they don't need to be like to do this. We're not trying to add anything together. We're simply multiplying. So we can say root 3 times root 5 will give you root 15. Now there's no square factor in here, so we can't simplify this any further. Moving down to this question, we're multiplying 3 onto a negative now there's no value, no coefficient here, but if you like we can put a 1. Number 1 can be there, so we'll say it's minus 1 times 3. So that's going to give you minus 3. And then here we've got our square root of 5 times 5. So that's going to give you 25, or you might remember from the previous video that when we do something like this, it's root 5 squared. And when you do root 5 squared, they cancel out, you go back to the 5 value. So what we're going to end up with is minus 3 times, this value here becomes 5, and that ends up being minus 15. Moving down to here, we've got 15 root 6 divided by 3 root 2. We'll just separate this into two parts. We've got 15 over 3. So we're looking at those coefficients again, these values on the front. 15 over 3. And here we've got 6 over 2 under the big square root sign. You could do it that way if you want. So we've got 15 over 3. That's going to give you 5 root what we've got here is 6 divided by 2, that's the value of 3, so 5 root 3. Last of all, we've got this one here, and we'll do it a similar way. We're going to just place these values under the square root signs together, like we've got here for 6 root 2, we'll do it here. So we've got a negative out the front, and we're going to say it's 15 over 3. So we're going to carry that negative with us. You can see it was there on that first part. We're just going to carry that with us. So we've got negative 15 divided by 3. 5, so negative root 5. So for these questions here, we're just going to multiply the value on the front of the brackets onto each of the values on the inside. So it's very similar to something like this. If I had, say, 2 at the front of a plus 3, I would say 2 times a. I'll just do this in a different color. We're going to multiply that through onto the a, 2 times a, and then a second time around, that 2 will multiply onto the other value in the brackets. So that's another multiply there. So 2 times a, that gives you 2a. 2 times 3, we've got the plus there still. 2 times 3 is 6. So you get 2a plus 6 for that. We're doing exactly the same thing here. So it's going to be root 2 times the very first value there, 3 root 5. And then we're going to do it a second time onto that value over here, the negative root 3. So what we'll get is 2 times 3 root 5. Well, there's no coefficient on the front of that square root of 2. But we could pretend there's a 1 there if you like, but it doesn't really matter. We're, we know we're going to get a 3 there, simply keeping that 3 with us, and then we multiply the square roots together. So root 2 times root 5 will give you root 10. Then we've got a negative, and here we've got root 2 times root 3. So we're just going to multiply those values together to get root 6. Now there's no square factors in either of these, so we don't need to simplify anything, so we're fine. So for this question here, we're multiplying 2 root 3 by 2 root 30, and then we've got 2 root 3 multiplying onto negative 4 root 3. So for the first part, just pay attention to those coefficients. We've got 2 times 2. We saw this in the first two examples. 2 times 2 would give you 4, and then we've got root 3 times root 30. So that's going to give you 3 times 30 is 90. So 4 root 90. Now for the second half, I've got a minus here, so I keep the minus there. Now 2 times 4, multiplying those coefficients again, will give you 8. And then we've got root 3 times root 3. And we've seen this a couple of times now. If you're multiplying the same square root by itself, what happens? Well, we know that root 3 times root 3 becomes root 9, and then that's a square factor. Square root of 9 goes back to the number 3. So you can simplify this straight away, and we'll just say that it's 8 times, and these values become 3. So what we've got now is 4 root 90 minus 8 times 3. Okay, The 2 times the 4 is the 8, and the root 3 times the root 3 became 3. Right, I'll just put that there. That's 
root 3 times root 3 equals the square root of 9, and we know the square root of 9 is 3, so that goes straight back to that value right there. All right, so for this last part here, we've got 4 root 90. So what does that mean? We can simplify it. We've got 4 times. Are there any square factors in here? Well, you can see you've got 9 times 10 will give you 90. So I'll just separate that for now and say we've got 9 times 10 minus, and we can simplify this now down to 8 times 3 is 24. So what else can we do? We've got 4 times, what's the square root of 9? That's 3, and we've still got the 10 there, the root 10, minus 24. So last of all, we've got 4 times 3 will give you 12, and then we have to keep that root 10 there, and then carry this minus 24 on the end of it. That's your final answer. So 12 root 10 minus 24.